State Senator Kelly Hancock, Republican of North Richland Hills, thank you so much. 2022 has been a very positive year for you. It's been a pretty good year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had a very successful uh, transplant of your kidneys, and your son-in-law was your donor. Yeah. Um, first of all, how are you feeling? How is he doing? And talk to me about this. I feel great. Had uh, you know, I'll, I'll do testing periodically. I'm now doing it once a month. Uh, in fact, I had a televisit this morning with my doctor. All things are good. Uh, he likes the medication balance that we have right now. Um, I'm, I'm probably living a more normal life than I have in 30 years. Uh, I always had to kind of watch what I ate, uh, especially there at the end. And, and there at the end, uh, as the kidneys got worse, they got down to about 8 to 10% function. Had a lot of, um, had difficulty walking if I wasn't on medication, steroids, just because of um, toxins building up in my feet. So very glad to be on the other side. I can pretty much eat what I want to eat. Um, life is normal. I'm able to exercise. Started running again, which there at the end I couldn't really. I uh, went from running marathons to a half a mile was about all I could could put in there at the very end. So it was different. No, you know, really my family's the only one that that knew. And so when it came time to needing um, a kidney, uh, I'd actually told them six years ago. I was told I'd be on dialysis in one or two years made it six years and then so there was another conversation of okay I'm having to go on the transplant list and ended up with eight you know family members that were willing to test and see if they were a match and uh, we found a match within the family kinda and what was that like for you that it was your son-in-law yeah he was the best match which is just kind of a God thing um, you know uh, had family members match but it ended up turning out that, yeah, Greg Cox, uh, my son-in-law, ended up being the best match, which worked well because both my daughters, who were also a match, uh, had just had children that were young. And, you know, part of not being, you, you, neither one of us, I couldn't pick up my grandkids. He couldn't pick up, you know, his kids following surgery because they go through your abdomen. You know, I've, he's got some scars. I've got a pretty sizable scar in, in my abdomen following that. And so you do have to be careful on what you lift. And, uh, but, I mean, everything, it just couldn't have gone better. We're very, very blessed. Um, you know, f feel like, you know, God had his hand on us the whole time. Uh, yeah, we went through the protocols of being quarantined with my wife and I. We couldn't be around anybody. Couldn't, you know, we went 90 days where we couldn't eat out, couldn't bring in food. Uh, in order to just, I was kind of a lab rat at the time because they were trying to get my meds right anytime you take on someone else's organ. And so they wanted to limit any outside impact back, you know, didn't want me to get infections. And so went through that 90 days and we passed that and uh, then got released and uh, my wife was ready to go out and eat, which, which I was actually able to order whatever I wanted on the menu, which is the first time really in about 10 years I was able to do that. Where was that and what was that? Well, <laughs> that was, uh, you know, I think we ended up, I'd, I'd told her there's a, a restaurant here in, in Colleyville uh, called the uh, Stone House that uh, really great food, and but I could eat very little of it because I avoided proteins, potassium, and phosphorus, which is what my kidneys had a hard time uh, filtering out. And so, yeah, we we ate there and had a, had a good meal, and um, it's just nice to be able to look at a menu again. and make selections. We had our restaurants, but I knew, all right, I can have this one or I can have that one. Uh, now, you know, I pretty much tell her when we share a plate, anything on the meat section, that's, that's where I'm at. So let me ask about, because you, you talked a little bit about the, the impact, and yet I remember interviewing you in past <laughs> years, never suspected anything. Yeah. You looked fine. And so talk to me a little bit about how difficult it was for you to go public with this. You know, I was diagnosed 31 years ago, right after uh, our oldest, Chloe, was born. She was just a couple of months old. Um, the disease I have is very, very rare. Uh, it it's really, called Berger's disease. Berger right? disease Berger, or, okay. or IgA nephropathy. Okay. And so it does what it wants to do. And so we were told that it could, you know, I, would, I was going to need a kidney at some point or go on dialysis at some point. And they told us at the time it could be two days, two months, two years. Uh, in fact, we know of a young man that uh, within two days of being diagnosed, he was put on dialysis uh, here in Fort Worth. And so 
we were very, very fortunate that I made it that long. Um, you know, I was told to limit my running to two miles at a moderate pace. I found a different now nephrologist that really said, we just, this is so rare, we don't know what this thing does. It does its own thing. Was able to run six marathons. Um, couldn't run half a mile at the end. You know, once I got down uh, to really low kidney function. And, um, but 30 years ago, Jack, I, you know, I really wanted to live my life and, and show, you know, as a, as a Christian, I wanted to show that um, God's sovereign and I can live a normal life and I can trust Him, not knowing if I'm going to wake up tomorrow on dialysis, not knowing um, if I'm going to wake up and, and need a kidney. And of course, I got there and, you know, what I feel very blessed that I was able to tell the story I wanted to, to be on the other side and say, look, I'm healthier than I've been in. I know you all thought I was healthy. I was not at all. And I knew it and I chuckled inside and anytime anybody commented. Um, but I was able to say, you know, I, I was able to live with that because I just have faith that it's all going to be okay. Um, and so I got on the other side and was able to tell my story the way I wanted to, which in politics you rarely get to tell the story the way you want to tell it. Um, and so uh, literally I can sit here today and, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've talked and you never knew. I didn't ever want you to know. I wanted to be just normal like everybody else. Um, and I can say I'm healthier than I've been in 30 years. How tough was that, though? Because here you were a young guy, right? Still in your 20s. It was early. Right? And, and it, it was, in fact, you know, um, it, it is it is the one thing that I'm not a big emotional guy, but it does bring back emotions uh, that I have to hold back. I mean, if you can imagine our first baby, um, I literally went to the doctor the first time by myself, and he had said, you probably should bring your wife to the next visit. And that's when he shared with us um, the spot we were in and not knowing whether it would be two days, two months, two years um, on doing that. And so, yeah, that was uh, difficult and it probably has helped, helped me um, knowing those things that I take things a little differently because of what I lived with. I understand what's really important um, and don't get too caught up in other things and let them impact me emotionally uh, too much. Um, and I'm, you know, I just have always had a comfort, you know, of knowing I, I was good regardless of the circumstances. And I didn't let my circumstances control my attitude, my actions, my behavior. Um, I just wanted to live a very productive life and you know, I was able to do that, even with something that would have, had I gone on dialysis, which six years ago was kind of where I was at, you know, I couldn't have done any of this stuff. I mean, I, I, I can't do elected office the way I do elected office, which is all in and work, it had I been on dialysis. But, I mean, you had your moments, I mean, is what, <laughs> what you were telling me, right? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, we're all human, Yeah. Right? I mean, especially right. for a young guy, you know, now you're, you know, you've raised a family, you've, you've experienced life. Oh, yeah. You know, but when you're in your 20s, you know. No, it was tough, uh, young and not knowing. I mean, it was the not knowing. And so you just keep moving forward. And then certainly there at the end, you know, I knew this session, what was probably coming at the end of it. You know, there were mornings putting on my dress shoes um, that I was in tears because because of uric acid building up in my feet. Um, and then painful. you're, then, yeah, pretty painful. Uh, but then again, I didn't want anyone to really know. And so I would do my job and I would work and I'd come home and I'd elevate my feet and put them up and, and rest at the end. And it was, I had a job to do. You know, I had to fulfill my obligation to the voters and those that elected me. And so we focused on it, knowing that when I got home and sure enough, I got home you know, I'm sure you've heard the story. I went, when I was being tested every month for six years or longer, um, but tested, he immediately called me back, and you know, that's when you know that okay, I'm it's time for the transplant list. And then we started that in January, um, both in Dallas and Fort Worth, because they're two different regions. And mm. you know, I learned a, a ton um, along the way. Uh, you know, I'd read and researched for 30 years about kidneys. I could probably tell you. You know, more than anybody wants to know regarding where we are in research, where we are. 
because it was it was personal, obviously. And so I did a lot of my own research because I didn't want to talk to anybody really about it. I wanted to ask you, was there anything that you learned along the way about, you know, transplants and organ donation that you as a lawmaker could help? Yeah, Jack, especially with when it comes to, you know, um, renal disease, kidney disease is one of the more common diseases we have in this country, especially in the state of Texas, along um, in, in the South Texas and other areas. And one of the things I've learned that, you know, just sticks with you, especially when you need one, is that there's five times the need as for a kidney as there are kidneys available. Um, and the other thing I knew that, you know, you had to live with knowing is the average wait time for a cadaver kidney, a deceased donor, uh, is five to seven years on dialysis. Um, wow. Right, wow. So, um, you know, we're looking at some of those things. Uh, the what, is, what does that mean? Well, right now in the state of Texas, you and, and we've worked hard to promote it, and, and we have a pretty good response rate on people willing to check that on their license plate to say that they will donate their kidney. But I think also to educate people on, you know, the ability to, to be a living donor. You know, the, the young man I told you about here that was on dialysis within two days, another friend of ours, um, he is just a friend of, of, of his and, and knew him from Bible study. And he has agreed to and become, a, and is a match. So he'll be donating his kidney um, in fact, it may be this week, <laughs> Jack. Wow. Yeah. So he was able to move very quickly because he had a living donor. And we can live with one kidney. I, I have three. I just have two that don't work. They didn't take them out. Oh, uh, but my son-in-law, I mean, he, was, he texted me the other day. You know, he had rode 12 miles on his bike. So, yeah, I mean, he his function dropped a little bit. But that one kidney will raise the function back to where all of his vitals and all are, are normal again now. And mine are... Frankly, mine are better than they've been in 30 years uh, with a, with one kidney. So you think the state can and should do a better job of educating the public? Right, and we've tried to do that, and and uh, you know I've been to certain, and we have groups that I'm working with now um, because of the position I'm in. It does give us a voice. Uh, there's a lot of even the transplant list here in Fort Worth. The group that I was in when we were going into the clinic to to have our testing done during those. Um, two weeks where we were going three days a week. You know, we'd get tested on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, be there from 7.30 to 2.30. You know, it was a room of 15 people, and it, very diverse, you know, very eclectic. It just was part of, frankly, it was not just part of Fort Worth or Tarrant County, but people were driving in because, you know, it's have a, a good- regional. Right, it's a big regional area and good transplant center. Um, but this is, you know, they're, Fort Worth alone, you know, Medical City is doing five to seven surgeries a, a week. And so it's it's a lot more prevalent uh, than we think. And the need is there, not just for kidneys, but other organs. And just try to m make sure we can promote it. And if we can raise the number of those that are checking that box when they get their driver's license, then I feel like we've made a difference. And, you know, I had a friend remind me as I was running for election this time, he, he asked me, you remember what you told me when you first ran for the state house? And I'm like, I have no clue. And it was at a football game. And he said, well, I asked, he asked me why I wanted to run. And I said, well, I think I can make a difference. And I think because of my experience, which I wouldn't trade with anybody, I'm, I'm a different person because of what I lived with. I think I can make a difference in, in organ donations. And that's what we're going to try to do. And we're looking at everywhere we can, I think, letting people know that the process, my son-in-law went back to work in two weeks, uh, and, and letting people know that, yeah, it's a major surgery, but if you're willing to do it, you can live with one kidney, and you can literally, trust me, change the life of somebody else by giving them a, uh, an organ. I wanted to ask you about the legislative session that's coming up. Uh, in just a few weeks. Sure, <laughs> to around the corner. What are your priorities for the new session? You know, J Jack, um, really our top priority in our office is making sure that we get done the legislative things that our constituents have brought us. And some of them are bigger than others. And, you know, the, 
the very first session I went down there in the house, it was a constituent that complained about balanced billing. And of course, you know how long it took me to get that done, and, and I've worked on it for over a decade now, mm -hmm. but it came from a constituent. And so, you know, we had another constituent here whose daughter was kidnapped at a Maverick game. And so we've worked with him um, on looking at some changes. And so really our priorities are what has impacted the district and impacted our constituents that sometimes they're big things like, you know, I didn't think balance billing would be a big thing. It became a big thing. You know, this obviously, that someone can be kidnapped and law enforcement has uh, snags along the way, preventing them and delaying them from acting upon that. You know, that's kind of a big thing that we want to try to address there. And so our, our list really comes from our constituents that we meet with and we see um, during the interim, which is why I te love Texas doing it the way they do it. As a business guy like me, I'm not really, I've been, I've served for a long time. You know me pretty well. I'm not really a politician. I just call a spade a spade and I'm a business guy that likes fixing problems, and so um, nothing gives me greater joy than fixing constituent problems. Property tax relief? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's all of our constituents' problems. You know, it's a bipartisan issue. We worked on it, um, on that. Not every local municipality, um, some found ways to skirt around you know, the property tax reforms that we put in place. So yeah, we'll continue to look at that. It continues to be an issue. It is how we pay for education. I mean, it is pay how we uh, pay for municipal needs. You know, it's just making sure that we're paying for needs and not wasteful spending uh, along the way. And we'll certainly be looking at addressing that. But that's a, you know, that's a top state priority. And I can go in knowing, hey, these, the border, huge issue. Uh, been down there a num number of times with the governor. Education, huge issue. Parental involvement in education. You know, those big issues, someone's going to carry that. What I like focusing on is my constituent needs, knowing that, yeah, we've got to address border, and we wish the federal government would not hurt us. I mean, some of the policies, you know, Title 42, it hurts us. We're seeing our numbers spike because of federal government, if they just, I mean, help us a little would be great, but just quit hurting us down here when it comes to border security. And then property taxes, we just keep working at it and working at it, and um, you know, we'll be back at it this session. My last question, just then you mentioned Title 42. What should and can the state be doing? What more? Because the state yeah. has done a lot. Oh, we've done, it's, you know, let's go back to the last, four sessions, I mean, we'd probably spent of Texas taxpayer money. Let's be real clear. Texas taxpayer money. It's not state money. We don't have any money. Over $8 billion on the border. And yet, because of federal policies, the numbers continue to grow. The fentanyl that keeps coming across continues to grow. The money going into the cartel's hands on human trafficking and other needs continue to grow the deaths along the border, and I've talked to the border sheriffs who have to recover those bodies. They continue to grow. Um, we've got to have federal help, and we don't seem to be able to get it from this administration, but we are seeing some bipartisan support um, when it comes to that. It's just not very much, but those living along the border and living with it are beginning to call for assistance as well. State Senator Kelly Hancock, Republican of North Richland Hills. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Jack. We appreciate it.